Welcome to Europe PCR 2016. The topic of today will be LLA closure and the role of imaging in this procedure. So I will start with our two experts, uh, Farel Helig from South Africa and Sergio Berti from Italy. Welcome, thank you very much for coming here. Uh, I'm very happy to have such great experts. Um, so I will start with uh, you, Dr. Uh, Helig. Uh, with the first question is what is the role of imaging in the procedure? So before the procedure, what is the role of imaging? <clears throat> well, thank you very much. The left atrial appendage is a very complex structure and we need to uh, delineate the anatomy of the, of the left atrial appendage before we can start the procedure and also we need to make sure that there's no thrombus in the, in the left atrial appendage before performing the procedures in order to prevent creating a complication during the procedure. And there are many types of left atrial appendage. We can use transesophageal echo and we can use CT scan for uh, measuring the dimensions and the depth and the shape of the appendage to exclude thrombus and plan our procedure. So this is before the procedure. Yeah. And during the procedure, what do you during think? During the procedure, we need to guide our therapy. We need to uh, look at the interatrial septum and position our transepsal puncture. We need to see where we are placing the device and make sure it's optimized. And we use a combination of fluoroscopy, angiography, and um, transesophageal echo. In, and there are other modalities as well, but those are the, the most important two basic modalities. So this is during the procedure, are you checking your patient afterwards in the follow-up? Yes, in the follow-up, I think it's important to make sure that uh, uh, we've had a good result. We check the result at the time of the procedure, but afterwards we want to make sure that there's no thrombus on the device and that there's a complete seal before we stop our post-procedural medications, particularly if the patient is on anticoagulation. In order to stop it, we need to make sure that there's no significant leak and our device is uh, well positioned without thrombus. Okay. When are you doing this procedure? I mean, no, the checking. Well, there's, no, the there's no clear uh, time frame specified for this, but the consensus is three months on average because that's the duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy normally. So we usually do it at three months. Okay, that's perfect. So I understood that you use the TEE and sometimes the CT before, during the TE and afterwards the TE, but we have emerging modality, imaging modality, and I'm turning to you now uh, to know whether, uh, how, what is the role of the emerging uh, new imaging modality in this specific procedure? Um, well, uh, thanks for the question. Um, the, the LA is a complex uh, anatomical structure that requires a multi-imaging uh, approach because uh, uh, no, no, no one single source of imaging can give you all the information you need. So you, can take, you have to take uh, uh, some information from the echo, some information from the fluoro, and so on. And uh, in my opinion, the, 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 the best solution is the multi-imaging approach, so you can have an idea of the real anatomy of the appendage. This is true f during the planning phase, because you can take information from the TEE, uh, 2D, 3D and from the CT scan and during the procedure. During the procedure we have to integrate the information from, from the angio, from the fluoro with the echo. Uh, you can select the TEE, 2D or 3D or recently the HICE because uh, the intracardiac echocardiography is less invasive than the TEE and uh, you can then the procedure without the general anesthesia. It's less discomfort for the patient and uh, the quality of uh, imaging is comparable. And uh, uh, during the follow-up, we use the TE and the CT scan, <coughs> it depends on the type of the patient, on the clinical characteristic of the patient. At the end, the information that we have are the same, uh, information about uh, the, the device, the deformation of the device, uh, if, uh, there is a thrombus on the device and the in, in, eventually impingement of the device on other surrounding anatomical structure. So I understood that we need imaging uh, first to see the diameter because the sizing is very important in order to avoid to embolize. Uh, what is your preferred uh, um, imaging modality to size uh, uh, the, the device? 
I tend to use the, the TE intraprocedurally uh, as the sizing, most important measure of sizing. The reason I like to do the sizing in the procedure is we can check the left atrial pressure, make sure the patient's got adequate hydration and the measurements are then accurate. Use TE, but we sometimes use fluoro as well to double check our, our measurements, but most of the time use TE only for measurement. Okay, and in your institution? Uh, we prefer plan carefully the procedure before with the, all the TE, 3D, 2D, 3D on the CT scan and you go in CAT lab with a clear idea of uh, what we have to do and how to do. And, uh, but during the procedure we uh, check with the fluoro and with the ice or TE again in order to, uh, to evaluate if the, uh, the, 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 the device that we selected during the planning phase is correct. So we repeat, we confirm, the, because the, the, one of the problems is the uh, volume changing depending on the different pressure of the left atrium. Okay, so I understood that you use IST uh, during the procedure, CTT before the procedure, and at follow-up you were talking about three months. Do you think that CT is a valid option to check the patient in terms uh, of uh, device-related thrombus? Yes, it's correct. I think that you can use all the imaging technology you prefer. It's important to have uh, information about the anatomy and uh, um, correct the correct dimension of the, of the appendage before and uh, you have uh, an imaging strategy to guide your procedure during the procedure and after the procedure check all with the CT or with TEE the result and uh, we uh, perform one TE three months later of the procedure, and uh, if we have a leak, we repeat the TE one year later. And what is your procedure? Are you using the CT at three months or only the no, TE? No, only the TE. And uh, I think it's important to point out as well that not every center has capabilities in all modalities. And uh, I think it's important to decide what is the minimum requirement for imaging to, to do successful procedure. And I think at the very least you need obviously good fluoroscopy and angiography, but 2D TEE, you can do the procedure safely and effectively. And uh, in centers wanting to start out, that's a minimum requirement to have excellent 2D TEE imaging. So thank you very much. I will just summarize what have been said uh, today. The imaging has a central role in the LLA closure. I would say that before you can use the CT or the TE, whatever, but you have to have an idea of the dimension and the feasibility of the procedure. And then during the procedure, you can use the eyes, you can use the TE, but you need a precise uh, imaging modality to see what are you going to do together with the angio that uh, you have it obviously and at follow-up you have the TE or the CT that you can use both. So thank you very much. I think it was a, a great uh, uh, interview uh, from you, thank you. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you.